Hey everyone, a cosmic level clash is shaking up both politics and space exploration. It's the explosive fallout between President Donald Trump and Elon Musk, two titans who were once allies but are now locked in a feud that could change the future of the U.S. space program. Buckle up because this is a wild ride. In today's Tech Map episode, we're breaking it down into three main points. The original reason for their conflict, the threat to stop SpaceX's Dragon spacecraft, and the massive impact this could have on NASA and the U.S. space program. Plus, I'll throw in some extra context to tie it all together. Let's get started. First up, what sparked this whole mess? The drama kicked off in early June 2025, when Elon Musk, fresh off his 130-day stint as a special government employee leading the Department of Government Efficiency, DOG for short, publicly slammed a tax cut and spending bill backed by President Trump. Musk called it a disgusting abomination on X because it would balloon the national deficit. Trump didn't take it lightly. He fired back from the Oval Office, accusing Musk of going crazy and threatening to terminate billions in government contracts with Musk's companies, including SpaceX. The easiest way to save money in our budget, billions and billions of dollars, is to terminate Elon's governmental subsidies and contracts. I was always surprised that Biden didn't do it, Trump posted on X. Now, of course, he's not only referring to SpaceX here, that could also impact Tesla. This wasn't just a war of words. It was a direct shot at Musk's empire. Now, let's talk about the bombshell that took this feud to orbit. Musk's threat to decommission SpaceX's Dragon spacecraft. On June 5, 2025, Musk posted on X, saying, In light of the president's statement about cancellation of my government contracts, SpaceX will begin decommissioning its Dragon spacecraft immediately. Y'all, this was huge. The Dragon spacecraft, both Crew Dragon and Cargo Dragon, is NASA's lifeline to the International Space Station. It's the only U.S. spacecraft currently capable of ferrying astronauts to and from the ISS and returning significant cargo to Earth. Just in March 2025, Dragon rescued NASA astronauts Suni Williams and Butch Wilmore after Boeing's Starliner left them stranded for nearly 286 days. Musk's threat sent shockwaves through the space community. Eric Berger, a respected space journalist, emphasized it is wild times and noted that Musk's long-standing reluctance to continue Dragon projects in favor of focusing on Starship a next-generation vehicle intended for deep space missions like Mars colonization. This is not necessarily a bluff. Elon has been reluctant to take on new Dragon-related projects for a while now and would like to move human missions to Starship as soon as possible. Of course, it would completely end ISS and impair future commercial space stations. Wild times. But here's where it gets spicy. Musk later backtracked. A few hours after his initial post, he responded to a user on X saying, OK, we won't decommission Dragon. So was this a bluff to call Trump's bluff? Or a moment of cooler heads prevailing? Either way, the threat alone was enough to raise eyebrows, with some calling it reckless. Former NASA Deputy Administrator Lori Garver even said, a rogue CEO threatening to decommission spacecraft, putting astronauts' lives at risk, is untenable. The stakes couldn't be higher. But the drama doesn't stop there. Musk escalated things to a whole new level when he dropped what he called a truth bomb on X. He wrote, time to drop the big truth bomb. Donald Trump is in the Epstein files. That's the real reason they haven't been released. Have a great day, DJT. He even added, bookmark this post for the future. The truth will come out. Oh my goodness. This is next level. Whoa. This wasn't just a policy jab, it was a personal nuke. Musk had spent over $200 million backing Trump's re-election. So this accusation, tying Trump to the controversial Epstein case, was a betrayal felt around the world. Trump, who had initially been somewhat respectful, clapped back saying, Elon's getting tiresome. I asked him to leave. 
I pulled his EV mandate that forced everyone to buy electric cars nobody wants, and he knew I'd do that months ago. He just went nuts. The gloves are officially off. So, what does this mean for NASA and the U.S. space program? If Musk had followed through, it would have been a disaster. The Dragon spacecraft is critical to the ISS, which is a $100 billion orbiting lab involving dozens of countries. Without Dragon, NASA would have to lean on Russia's Soyuz spacecraft, which is less frequent and way more expensive since Russia's cutback production. This would cripple ISS operations, disrupt scientific research, and leave the U.S. without a reliable way to get astronauts to space from American soil. And get this. SpaceX is also contracted to build the U.S. deorbit vehicle to safely bring the ISS down in 2030. No Dragon, no deorbit plan, and that's a national security issue. But it's not just the ISS. SpaceX holds about $22 billion in government contracts, including $15 billion from NASA for Falcon 9 rockets and Starship, which is set to land astronauts on the moon for the Artemis program. If Trump cancels these contracts, it could derail NASA's moon-to-Mars ambitions and hand a strategic advantage to competitors like China. Plus, the Pentagon relies on SpaceX for launching national security satellites and building a spy satellite constellation. Analysts say SpaceX's dominance in the space industry might cushion it from some fallout. But losing these contracts would still sting. Big time. Now let's add some extra context to really understand this feud. This isn't just about a budget bill. Musk and Trump were once tight. Think Trump touring Tesla models at the White House and watching a Starship launch together in November 2024. But cracks started showing. For example, Trump's team pulled Jared Isaacman, Musk's pick for NASA administrator, from consideration, citing his past Democratic donations. Insiders say this was a shot at Musk, signaling his influence wasn't absolute. Plus, Musk's role in Doge raised conflict of interest concerns, since he was overseeing cuts at agencies like NASA that fund his own company. Talk about a tricky spot. And let's not forget the bigger picture. Musk is pushing for a Mars-focused space agenda, which clashes with NASA's Artemis program and its moon-first approach. He's even suggested deorbiting the ISS sooner to free up resources for Mars. Trump's budget proposal already leaned toward SpaceX's priorities, cutting NASA's expensive space launch system in favor of Starship. But with this feud, those plans are up in the air. The Senate restored funding for SLS, which could limit SpaceX's gains if Trump doesn't fight for Musk's vision. So, where do we go from here? This feud is a high-stakes game of chicken. If Trump pushes to cancel SpaceX's contracts, it could disrupt NASA's operations for years. If Musk doubles down, he risks alienating a key partner in the government. But both sides have a lot to lose. SpaceX is too critical to U.S. space ambitions. And Trump needs Musk's innovation to push his bold space agenda. For now, cooler heads seem to have prevailed with Musk's retraction. But this drama is far from over. What do you think? Will they patch things up or is this the start of a bigger battle? Drop your thoughts in the comments. Anyway, if you loved this deep dive, smash that like button, hit subscribe, and ring the bell. We're aiming for 150,000 subscribers, and we need you to get there. Check out our other videos on Starship, Artemis, and more, and let's keep exploring the cosmos together. Okay, now let's take a breath. Forget the stress. Forget the chaos to welcome to the good news. Hey, space fans, it's Dragon's liftoff season again. Something truly exciting is happening on the launch pad, and it's something worth celebrating. SpaceX has just delivered its newest Crew Dragon spacecraft to the iconic Pad 39A at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. That's right, the same launch pad that sent Apollo missions to the moon and continues to write space history today. This sleek new spacecraft, Crew Dragon C213, is fresh out of the hangar, brand spanking new and hasn't even flown yet. But that's about to change very soon. Mark your calendars. June 10th. That's when Axiom 4, Axiom Space's fourth private astronaut mission to the International Space Station, is set to lift off aboard a Falcon 9 rocket. And yes, it's going to be big. 
Why is this such a big deal? Well, for starters, Crew Dragon C213 is the fifth and final Crew Dragon capsule SpaceX will ever build. The end of an era, folks. It's closing the book on production and turning the page to full-on operations. So this flight? It's historic from the get-go. Leading the Axiom 4 crew is none other than Peggy Whitson, the legendary NASA astronaut who now works with Axiom as their director of human spaceflight. She's logged 675 days in space, more than any other American. If you want someone at the helm of a groundbreaking mission, you want Peggy. She'll be joined by an international trio who are about to make history themselves. Shubhanshu Shukla from India will serve as pilot. Mission specialists Swawosh Uznanski, a European Space Agency astronaut from Poland, and mission specialists Tibor Kapu from Hungary. None of these countries, India, Poland, and Hungary, has ever had one of their own live aboard the ISS before. So when Axiom 4 docks, it won't just be a mission, it'll be a milestone in space exploration. Once aboard the ISS, the team will spend two weeks conducting around 60 science experiments, pushing the boundaries of medicine, biology, physics, and tech in microgravity. After wrapping up their orbital research, they'll hop back into the Crew Dragon and make their return trip, eventually splashing down safely in the Pacific Ocean. For some quick context, Axiom Space's journey started with Axiom 1 in April 2022. SpaceX launched a four-person crew on the mission that included a former NASA astronaut and three paying space flyers. The four space travelers aimed to distinguish themselves as much as possible from space tourists by performing experiments and research on the International Space Station. The mission was originally scheduled to last 10 days but was extended to 17 days due to bad weather at the crew's splashdown site. It was followed by Axiom 2 in May 2023, with the crew consisted of four members. Peggy Whitson, former NASA astronaut and ISS commander, mission leader. John Schaffner, pilot, and two mission specialists from Saudi Arabia, Ali al Karni and Rayana Barnawi the first Arab woman in space. The crew conducted scientific research, outreach, and commercial activities aboard the ISS over about 10 days, Axiom 3 in January. 2024 is notable as the first all-European commercial astronaut mission to the ISS. The crew includes Commander Michael Lopez Alegria, former NASA astronaut and Axiom 1 commander, pilot Walter Villade, and mission specialists Alper Gezeravci, first Turkish astronaut, and Marcus Wandt, ESA-sponsored astronaut. The mission focused on pioneering scientific experiments in microgravity, including human health, medicine, cell biology, materials science, robotics, and AI, with an emphasis on enabling longer-duration human space missions and space habitability.